Welcome to Turning the Page, Lexington Public Library's podcast where we discuss library happenings, take a behind-the-scenes look at different parts of the library, and of course, book recommendations and author interviews. I'm your host, Jennifer. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Turning the Page. Today's episode is going to be Summer Reads. Yes, we're very excited. We have collected a large list of things and even maybe some homework of titles that we're not going to talk about, but we think you should look up. Yes. So this is an episode that we've done in the past, which we talk about anticipated books that are coming out probably starting like at the end of May, June, July, August, those kind of books. And those are the books that they're not just adult books, but for teens. And hopefully we have a few children reads in there. Yes. 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 So I'm excited. So do we want to kick off something that you're really interested in, Erin? Yes. So I'm going to start with talking about a series that is a kid series. It's recommended for ages 8 to 12 to read on their own. But we've been reading it with our six-year-old, reading it to her at night. And it is Randy Wayne White's series called Fins. It's the Sharks Incorporated series. Fins is the first one. And it's about a set of three kids ages 10 to about 13. And they join his character from his adult series, Doc Ford, for a summer to tag sharks. Oh, exciting. Embroiled in a mystery and end up working to solve a shark poaching ring there in Sanibel Flats in Florida. And so what part of Sanibel Flats? Is that like that? Is that the a fictional place? No, it's a real place. It is toward the bottom um, kind of in the Keys area. Oh, okay. There's actually a map in the book, but I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if, like, it was all, well, no, the place was fictional. Yeah, or, like, the place is real but fictionalized in the story. So there are some places, because he lives there, the author oh, lives okay. there. Some places are fictionalized but are clearly based on places. Like some place you, you would... You yeah. could look it up and say, yeah, yeah, exciting. So kind of like when we had Lynn Hightower on and we were finding all the places that were fictionalized right. in her book, but were right. We're like, oh, that's places. Lexington, but yeah. not really. Yep. Yeah, in the book. But so is there a new book coming out in this series? In September, there is. There, the fourth one is coming out, but there are three out now, Fins, Stingers, and Crocs. Um, and they are they are all very good. Ooh, I'm excited about this. Maybe I'll even read them. Yeah. And if you're interested in his adult series, the first one is called Sanibel Flats. It actually came out in like 1991. And we've got it as a print book and as a downloadable ebook. Ooh, exciting. Okay. So we have a little bit. So like a mom, mom, dad, and yep. uh, the kids can have a book at the same time. Exactly. I guess we could talk about where we found some of our information or where we where we go to look for some things. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, so I did. I just actually Googled it this year and tried to look for a variety, try to find what was on every list that I found, but then also try to find cross kind of cross reference. Yeah, Yeah, I noticed that looking at, I looked at a couple of different lists. One was sort of, there's a blog that I read sometimes. She writes about books that are coming out and like fun stuff. She has some good stuff. And I'll I'll talk about her in a minute. But I think she's called Book Queen List or something like that. And she has all these books. And I noticed that her list was very similar to some of the other lists. But some of it was more in popularity. Yeah. Like people who have a good following. Like someone like Ruth Ware might be on her list, but maybe not on another list. So I thought it was kind of interesting in that regard. So there is, speaking of Ruth Ware, there is a new Ruth Ware book. If you read any of her books. I have read hers, yes. Which I really have enjoyed every book that she has written. And so she does have a new book that's coming out in June called Zero Days. And I'm not sure exactly what it's about. I just know I saw the cover. That's all I know. But it's coming out in June. Yeah. And if you've enjoyed (laughs) her other titles... I think it's probably going to be on par. I'm sure it's going to be similar. But yeah, I think it's June 20th is when it's coming out. So I'm excited. Another one I want to talk about is not actually a new book for summer, but it is one that just kind of went viral and is a bestseller now, just all of a sudden. So it's This Is How You Lose the Time War, and it's by Amal L. Moeller and Max Gladstone. It's been out for a while, like I said, but it became popular on Twitter after this anime account focuses on Trigon. It has a really saucy name that I'm not going to <laughs> repeat. 
But basically, they tweeted about the book, which with a don't even Google this, just go read it. It's very short. Listen to it. It's four hours. Just do yourself a favor. And oh, people started retweeting it with like, yes, do this. This is an excellent book. And suddenly it became a bestseller. And I checked to see if we had any copies. We absolutely do. We have it in all formats, but they are all checked out. So that's available for holds. But just very vaguely, it's an epistolary work. So it's like letters back and forth from two rival agents at the end of the world. So Oh, this is interesting. Yes, it's very cool, very short, but really good. What was it called again? This is How You Lose the Time War. This is How You Lose the Time War. Okay, I'm interested in this. I'm always looking for something that doesn't take up a lot of time. You know, like the quick read that you can just, yeah. you know, maybe on the weekend you're like, hey, I have some time and I want to read something. Or I'm an Audible listener and yeah. a Libby listener. So well, some- it's four hours long, the audiobook. So you can just throw it on, you know, in between books and, yes. and listen to it. So. I just I just finished, um, and I cannot wait till he writes the next book, Richard Osmond's A Thursday Murder Club. Yeah. I just finished the third book and I'm just, I love that series so much. I cannot even stress how much I love it. It's so, I feel like I know these, the four people, the faint four main characters, they are my heart. I just love them. If you've read, if you've read the series, you will know what I'm talking about. These people are fantastic. But so I'm hoping Richard Osmond hurries up and writes the fourth book because I cannot wait. I don't think it's coming out until, until 2024, which is gonna really that, hurt me i don't know how much longer I can, it's always but. so sad you get to the end of a series and uh, it's like a year or more wait i literally one. had i was listening to it on libby and uh, which i love and i was looking at my phone and i'm like oh no there's only like three minutes left and i was like it's at the end what am i gonna do <laughs> it's over it's over <laughs> i'm so sad yeah i'm i'm gutted i can't i can't wait i gotta have a new one richard osmond hurry up um, but yeah, I love that series. And the narrate the Leslie Manville. I don't know if you know the actress Leslie Manville. Uh very vaguely. She's in a lot of British she's British, but she's in a lot, but she reads the first two books. Oh and cool. her voice is so perfect for the characters. And Fiona Shaw, who played Mrs. Dursley in the Harry Potter movies, reads the third one. And I was upset. I thought it was gonna be not as good, but she actually did good. So <laughs> there you go. And one of the other books that I know from the my location, there's the, is her books are always checked out. Is Aline Hildebrand has a new book coming out June thirteenth called The Five Star Weekend. Looks like it's again one of these beachy reads where it takes place in Nantucket, which I've all, I've never been, which I would love to go. It's so basically it's a some gathering of best friends. And they were been best friends since they were teens. So one of those sort of ladies, lady reads. And I think there's a murder, actually. And like there's <laughs> an accident or something that happens in this story. So just to like prompt some intrigue, but basically ladies' lives and their childhood friendships. So, but she's popular here. So. I'm going to skip ahead because I actually have one that's fairly similar to that. So if you like that kind of friends coming back together story it's called the celebrants it comes out on may 30th but it's already in the catalog for holds and it's the celebrants by stephen rowley and it follows a group of college friends who as they've you know become adults and established their lives they always get back together to fulfill this pact that they had to throw living funerals for each other so basically oh. to like celebrate their lives and remember that that their lives are worth living and that they mean something to their friends, if not, you know, to themselves, if they're having a hard time. But the summary I thought was really good. And I'm actually just going to read it. It's, oh, okay. It says it's a deeply honest tribute to the growing pains of selfhood and the people who keep us going, coupled with Stephen Rowley's signature humor and heart. The Celebrants is a moving tale about the false invincibility of youth and the beautiful ways which friendship helps us celebrate our lives, even amid the deepest challenges of living. Oh, wow. That sounds good. Yeah. I know one of the books that you just mentioned as we were on our little break <laughs> was A Botanist's Guide to Flowers and Fatality. That sounds really good. I just read the I just yeah. read the description. So it's a uh, botanist Saffron Everly is no stranger to using her expertise to solve crimes. When she's called to investigate a series of murders involving poisonous flowers, she discovers that each bouquet may be hiding a sinister message. 
And if Saffron's suspicions are correct, decoding these messages through Victorian bibliography will be the key to catch the killer. This sounds absolutely right up my alley. Yeah, because, like, you know, each flower has, like, a specific meaning. So you could, like, send someone a bouquet, which is like, I'm going to kill you next. Right. And if you don't Guess know what, what those flowers mean. Yeah, like. And one um, of these is poisonous. Yes. <laughs> Give this a whiff and it'll right. be your last. <laughs> oh, mandrake. Uh, yes. Oh, that sounds that sounds fun. Oh, yeah. so it looks like this is book number two, so hmm we yes. should look up that and yes see. we need to find out what book number one is but that one just the title alone caught me and it just sounded so intriguing oh and so i should say it's by kate Kavri. i'm gonna I'm not sure if i'm saying it right but i'll spell it it's kate k-h-a-v-a-r-i it looks like this book should be coming out June the 6th. The next one we're going to talk about is actually this year's kind of hot discourse novel. It is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. And it's about a white woman who is struggling as an author. She hasn't had anything published. She just, but she's determined that she will be the next best selling author. She has a friend who's Asian, but sadly chokes to death. Early on in the novel, it's not a spoiler. And she steals her manuscript, her unfinished manuscript, and she finishes it, but she also assumes the identity of an Asian American woman to publish the book. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, appropriation and identity. And it's been a semi-controversial book. The author herself is an Asian woman. And um, she gave a really fascinating interview on NPR. So I, that's a homework piece to go look that up if you're yeah, interested. Yeah, if you're interested. In it. Yeah. But it's it's really a fascinating premise, and it's the way that the character is extremely unlikable all the way through. All it. those, she, yeah. And how she like doubles down on her innocence of this and that, and like she has valid points sometimes, but at the same time, it's just like no, you can't just steal someone's work and assume a separate identity for it so. right and you can't say well because my friend i knew this person they would want me to like yeah. continue but you know <laughs> yeah but and and the friend is not like a perfect victim either like okay. she is a flawed human as we all are right so it's very a very interesting work about humanity and identity and appropriation and what is interesting like what doesn't work one way but if you flip it it's okay so right it's it's interesting yeah and you think about what's i mean just look at the news and Mm -hmm. if you're on the if you're on the internet any you see so many things where um, it makes me think of that i can't think of her name but a couple years ago she was working for a call oh she was like a member Uh, of rachel dozel yes. yes and it makes me think of that and how that opened up a lot of discussion about what she, you know, what was going on there. Yeah, um, it's one of those like, what, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, the, what a weird thing. But if you're thinking about reading the book and you fall through that rabbit hole, you might go, you might look her up and say, what the heck was, it? what yeah. the heck was going on there? Yeah. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy story. The next book I want to talk about is a novel disguise by Samantha Larson. 1784 London, Miss Tiffany Woodall didn't murder her half-brother, but she did bury him in back garden so that she could keep her cottage. Hmm. Now the confirmed spinster has to pretend to be Uriah and fulfill his duties as the Duke of Beaufort's librarian while searching Aswell Palace for Uriah's missing diamond pin. Oh my goodness. The only thing of value that they own. Her ruse is almost up when she's discovered by Mr. Samir Lathrop, the local bookseller, who tries to save her from drowning when she's actually just washing up in the lake after burying her brother. <laughs> her plan is going to going by the book until the rector proposes marriage, and she starts to develop feelings for Mr. Lathrop. But when her childhood friend Tess comes to visit, Tiffany quickly realizes her secret isn't the only one hidden within the walls. The body of a servant is found, along with a collection of stolen items, and someone else grows mysteriously ill. Can Tiffany solve these murders without using her own disguise being discovered? If not, she'll lose her cottage and possibly her life. <laughs> Whoa! I know, right? This has all of it. <laughs> Love, murder, she's buried her half-brother in the back yeah, garden. Assumed identity. So, oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for this. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. And I think that one is in the catalog for holds, but I think it comes out in June. 
Another one that actually is out now, and I actually have a copy and have my hands on it. I will return it after this if you are interested in it. But it's Late Bloomers by Deepa Varadarajan. And I'm just going to read the summary on this one because it is just the right amount of information. (laughs) Um, Which is always good. (laughs) Yes. So it's after 36 years of a dutiful but unhappy arranged marriage, recently divorced Suresh and Lata Raman find themselves starting new paths in life. Suresh is trying to navigate the world of online dating on a website that caters to Indians and is striking out at every turn until he meets a mysterious, devastatingly attractive younger woman who seems to be smitten with him. Lata is enjoying her newfound independence, but she's caught off guard when a professor in his early 60s starts to flirt with her. (laughs) Meanwhile, Suresh and Lata's daughter Priya thinks that her father's online pursuits are distasteful even as she embarks on a clandestine affair of her own. And their son, Nikesh, pretends at a seemingly perfect marriage with his law firm colleague and their young son, but hides the truth of what his relationship really entails. Over the course of three weeks in August, the whole family will uncover one another's secrets, confront the limits of love and loyalty, and explore life's second chances. Oh, how cute. Yeah. So it sounds really good. It is not terribly long, and it just sounds like a really fun look at family and finding your own happiness. Oh, yeah. And I love stuff like that. Yeah. Where you kind of find, like, oh, you know. And especially when you think about date your your life or people you know mm-hmm. who are going through similar, yeah. you know, going through similar things. Like, but it doesn't always have to be so terrible. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it can be like, you know, something lighthearted. So one of the, a book that's probably not in my comfort zone, I don't read a lot of horror, but this has a thriller horror. It's a gothic chiller, Riley Sager. The only one left, I'll read you a little synopsis. Since 1929, Le- Le- Lenora Hope has never left her family main state ever since she was accused, but not convicted, of killing her sister. Now, in 1983, Kit McGree becomes Lenora's health aide to care for a wheelchair-bound woman who cannot speak. As Lenora begins to type out her story to Kit, Kit suspects the old lady might not be as harmless as she appears. So a little more reading about this book, it turns out she actually, they believe she killed her sister in a Lizzie Borden-esque way. Yeah. So if you know anything about Lizzie Borden, <laughs> yes. And you if you know, don't, um, just give that a quick Google. You could just Google that. So <laughs> this sounds extremely, seemly good. I'm excited about this. Woo! I'm excited. Cool. The next one I've got is Hula by Jasmine Ilani Hawks. And this one is a much longer book than what I think typically is considered a beach read, but it's about 400 pages, but it's a sweeping epic uh, set in Hawaii of family and tradition and a family who specializes in hula dance. And the summary says that it's a tale of mothers and daughters, dance and destiny. But it follows the three generations of women. The, The main character seems to be the youngest, and she has to navigate kind of this coming of age story for her and how she relates to dance in her family. She's never actually met her grandmother and her mother actively hides who her father is. Oh, and wow. Okay. So it's very intriguing and mysterious and just kind of what the relationship between these mothers and daughters are with the backdrop of kind of the post-statehood Hawaii. Oh, okay. Yeah. And plus, um, well, of course, hope. The dance is so important to the culture. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. It's not always murders. No, not (laughs) always murders. And that one is available now for holds in the catalog. The Riley Sager book is also has, I think at this point, I just looked 17 holds. Yeah. So So get on that list. Get on the list if you're interested. It sounds great. Another book that's coming out for June that seems like it's getting some buzz is called The Whispers by Ashley Audrin. It's about a well-off neighborhood. There's four families gathered for a pleasant summer barbecue, but her throne with the perfect hostess explodes at her young son's mistake. Hours later, the boy will fall out of a bedroom window in the middle of the night, and while he lies critically injured in the hospital, his mother refuses to speak, and their friendships quickly biting to an unravel. 
So wow. something big is underlying there. So that sounds kind of good. Yeah, I love stories like that where it's like a community that kind of starts to fall apart, like it frays at the edges yes. of things that were already there and cracks that were already starting to happen, but something just takes a hammer to it. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a page turn to me. Well, the last one that I have is Much Ado About Nada by Uzma Jalaluddin. And that's an upcoming adaptation of Persuasion. So the Jane Austen novel, it's it's a second chance romance if you've never read Persuasion. So in this one, Nada is 28 and her life has just gone off the rails. Um, her business has failed. She doesn't have a significant relationship in her life. She lives with her parents. And so her best friend decides that she needs to get out of the house. And so Taze decides to take her to Toronto's Islamic Convention and just to get her out of her shell, meet some people, and also meet her uh, fiancé and his brother, who turns out that she, the brother, whose name is Boz and Nada, have some history together, not all of it good. And it's about her reckoning with that kind of past relationship and it's a romance but it's really also focusing on her growth as a person yes and kind of finding herself again and what she wants to do so that one comes out on june 13th but is in the catalog for holds already of oh, the whispers is too most of these have many formats so whatever format you prefer you can find it in the catalog and if you can't find it in the catalog in the format you'd like you can request it using the suggest a purchase form yes. just put in the notes field that you want a different format of it and if it's available to us sometimes ebooks and e-audiobooks we have to wait we will do our best to get it Yes. The audible books are good. Like listening to stuff is so good. Yes. I'm, I love it. I never thought I would. I yeah. was never really much of a, I'm a podcast listener, but I was not much of a book listener. Mm -hmm. I was much like, I have to have, I have to read it kind of person. Yeah. Not no more. Yeah. I'm really completely hooked. Yeah. Audiobooks are fantastic, and narrators are fantastic, and translators are fantastic as well. Yes. Um, we, we support you. Another one, it's actually on my list of homework, but speaking of translators, it's a translated one, and I didn't write the translator's name down, which is a bad etiquette of mine, but it's the Days at the Morisaki Bookshop, and it's okay. about a, a woman who, again, her life has kind of fallen apart, and so she moves back home and helps to run her family's bookshop and she kind of doesn't want to do it but she learns a lot about herself and her community and the people that come to her i think it's her uncle's bookshop but it might be her father's um, but it's translated from japanese and it looks to be like just a really lovely story of self and community I so. That one comes out in July or August. It's on my homework list, so I didn't actually bring the bring the summary with me. So <laughs> I was just going to tell you to go look it up. But yeah, that sounds good. I love um, I love Japanese fiction. Yes, there's some really okay. So my honorable mentions, ones that if I had gotten summaries and read them for everything, this would be like a two hour long episode. And yeah, we can't so do that. I'm just gonna read title and author. So. Go look them up if the title catches you. Happy Place by Emily Henry. She is kind of the perennial beach read author that is super hot right now. Romance. Yes, romance. There's Bad Summer People by Emma Rosenblum. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. Bang Bang Bodhisattva by Aubrey Wood. Scotlander by Sheila McClure. Can't Let Her Go by Kiana Alexander. And then The Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa. That sounds like a good list. Do you have any homework titles? I do not. Other than just, you know, set with me and push Richard Osmond to write a fourth miracle, Thursday Miracle book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love those books. It's an old series, but I just, I loved Magpie Murders. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of my favorite mystery books yeah. i always suggest it to people if they haven't read it it's so fantastic and there was a sequel moonflower murders which is the second one which i've literally had sitting in my audible account forever because i was just i it's like the year i wanted to just let it linger yeah. and so finally today as i was driving to work today i started listening you finally to it. started it <laughs> 
finally started it. I Congratulations. Started yeah. <laughs> it's just been out forever, but yeah. you know, whatever. Well, I see you have these summer calendars in front of you. Yes. So I thought we could talk a little bit about what's happening at the library. Summer reading is fast approaching us. And so, of course, summer reading, we have a lot of big things going on specifically for kids, mm-hmm. but for adults as well. And so I thought we could just go, we could just mention a few of the big things that are happening what we call the big the big events. So summer events this year are starting a little bit later, but not starting June 5th. I think last year they started the last week of May, but they're June 5th. So the summer kickoff parties start June 6th. Every branch has one. There's a variety of times. Um, we have these uh, handy little magnets you can pick up at any branch. You can also go to lexpublib.org slash summer to see this list and download logs, calendars, all kinds of things. Then some of the big programs that we're going to have that every branch is going to have, different variety of times, places, you've got plenty of choices. There's no official log. There is a log if you just want to do it. You can download and print it yourself, but you don't have to turn it into us if it helps your child or you to keep track of something, to color in, to have a sense of, you know, accomplishment of doing it or kind of make a game out of it amongst yourselves. You can totally do that. But we aren't doing a log with prizes. The kickoff parties will have the book fairs again, where you get one book per child. The child does have to be present, pick out a book. Yes, that's important. uh, Yes, that's part of the contract. Unfortunately, we can't change any of that. Yes. So if you come to one of the parties, you'll be able to get a book then at the beginning of the summer and then have a new book to read through the summer instead of getting it at the end when the school year is starting again. That's true. That's good. I will mention that June 9th is the launch of summer for teens. It's teen summer at the library and the kickoff is actually going to be one location, which is the Eastside Branch Library. So keep that in mind. So if you have teens at home and they want to come to some events, there's all kinds of stuff going on that day. Yes, it sounds like an amazing program. So if you have teens. Yes, and it's, I believe it starts at six. And so some of the other, because every summer we have kind of the big signature programs. I'm just going to list off what they are. Check the, you can check the calendar for your favorite branch and figure out when you can go. But there's Kentucky Down Under is coming to do some animal programming. Um, we've got Bright Star Children's Theater again. They're always amazing. We have Designing, Engineering, and Bridges. This one specifically is for grades 5 through 8. So just note that one. Um, And then for grades 4 through 8, we have The Science of Skulls, Animal Identification, which just sounds amazing. a lot of fun. Um, (laughs) Yes, for sure. I'm excited about that one. And then in July, we've got Dinosaur Friends. We've got Hooked on Science and then School of Crocs. In School of Crocs, it's important to note that there is limited space for that program. And so the there are going to be tickets for it on the day of at the location that are first come, first served. So we can't reserve them. You have to come and get one. You might want to come early. Contact your your favorite branch to find out what their ticketing process is going to be. So we're not we're not going to forget you adults. (laughs) This sounds a lot of fun or interesting I should say. Thursday June 15th at Tate's Creek there's local cemeteries cracking the coat for adults which sounds really fun and we have Native American Flute with Fred Nez Kims. This is for adults and families. That's Saturday, July 8th at Central. Walking tour, Notorious Lexington for adults, July 12th at Central, 6 p.m. That sounds a lot of fun. And a little inside information for that one, if you're concerned about it being a physical activity, it is about an hour long and covers about four blocks. Okay. So there should be plenty of stops in between to rest if you're concerned. And another one that we might want to mention is Adulting 101. There's different home skills and dorm, which I think if you were a a parent of a teen, this might be something (laughs) that you might be interested in. Or a brand new adult yourself, you might be interested in, you know, if you're going to live on your own for the first time, it it will be a really nice series. There's one a week in July. Yeah, it looks like basic auto care, cooking. That's cool. So there's a lot of really neat, neat things. So we have a lot going on here. We do, we do. So check out the website for a lot more details. If you're in the branch, we have some calendars on brightly colored paper for June and July. 
the handy magnet, and there's also some collectible stickers. So as you come each week to the activities, you can pick up some really nice vinyl collectible stickers. They're really cute. They're adorable. Super cute. I love the crocodile. Yes, my favorite is the dinosaur. The little triceratops, which is my favorite dinosaur. Um, I have a six-year-old. I have a favorite dinosaur now. (laughs) (laughs) Who would have thought? Right. (laughs) I really love the crocodile. That's my it favorite. It is so cute. It is. They're all just really darling stickers. So come get one. Come visit us this summer. Yes. Have a nice low stress library summer reading program. Yes. Come and enjoy. That is it for us today. Yes. I hope thank you guys for listening to us rattle on about yeah. summer reads. Yes. <laughs> I hope you find something lovely to read this summer. And please tell us about it. Come into the branches. Talk about books with us. It's our favorite thing to do. Yes, exactly. Please do. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Erin. Bye. Thank you, Jennifer. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Turning the Page, a podcast brought to you by Lexington Public Library staff. If you've enjoyed listening, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any questions or suggestions for future podcasts, you can email us at elibrarian at luxpublive.org. That's elibrarian at L-E-X-P-U-B-L-I-B dot org. I'm Jennifer, and we'll be back to turn another page.